today, train centers, John with Bevel Cyclists, coming to you today from Bastion Cycles in Melbourne, Australia. I'm joined by Ben, and he's going to give me the factory tour of this fantastic facility. Yeah, hi, I'm Ben from Bastion Cycles. Um, we're based in Melbourne, Australia, a team of five. Uh, there's three of us that own the company. Myself and James, who's here today, and another guy, uh, Dean, who's not so uh, active in the business day to day. But um, yeah, this is our facility. We actually operate out of a, a shared facility, so we've grouped together with other bike brands or bike related brands. So we've got Rider Fit, who does bike fitting, who's in this front room here. Uh, and then we've got uh, Prova Cycles, he's not in today. Funnily enough, because he's out testing his new gravel bike that he's just developed. <laughs> Um, and then we've got uh, Velocraft at the back, which does paint. And actually, just recently, uh, Dan from Shifter Bikes now works out of here as well. So it's a real like collaborative space. We're six kilometers from the city. A uh, bit tight on space, but it's the price you pay to be close to the city. It's easy for customers to come and see us. Um, yeah, so I think the biggest difference between us and most other bike brands in the world is we really leverage 3D printing or additive manufacturing. All of our bikes use titanium 3D printed lugs, carbon fiber tubing, and that's one of the ways in which we build bikes that are customizable in terms of geometry, but in also in terms of stiffness and uh, paint and finishes like polished, matte, brushed, all of those things that come with using metal. Um, and they deliver a ride quality and uh, performance that no one else can um, through the way that we, we leverage the, the technology. So uh, those who have ridden titanium before know it delivers a really smooth, refined ride quality. Uh, we've got our own theories on why that is. And then carbon fiber is obviously lighter and can be made stiffer. But the way that we combine the two by using uh, joins or lugs made in titanium and carbon fiber tubing really gives the best of both worlds. So we get the lightweight and the high torsional stiffness and responsiveness of carbon, but we still get that really refined and smooth, quiet ride quality that a full titanium bike uh, delivers. So it's the best of both worlds. Yeah, so it's something really unique. Yeah, so this is our Crossroad model, which we released uh, earlier this year. And this is our, I guess, adventure gravel cross bike with being a custom geometry frame. We can sort of tune it anywhere between CX race geometry through to a full, a full gravel monster. Uh, it'll take up to a 743C tire with enough room for mud and, and dirt and snow and stuff. Uh, or you can put a 650B 2.1 inch in as well. Um, so this one here is fully painted, which is quite rare, but this is Charlie, one of our guys' personal bike, and he's a industrial designer, and yeah, he uh, chose to paint it all, but the colors have been really well received. Everyone loves it. Uh, so it's one by only. It's been deliberately developed around one by, and the reason for that is you can see where a lot of brands really thin out the chain stay between that gap to get the clearance, we've managed to keep it really thick and beefy and that keeps a really solid, uh, responsive uh, lower end to the bike. Um, and so this one's running four axis one by, but it can run mechanical as well. And then an NV with Chris King. So it's a pretty nice, pretty nice setup. And total weight is under eight kilos, definitely. I think seven and a half. So yeah, really light for the sort of bike that it is. So this one, this is our, I guess, our venture into the, the gravel scene. Uh, g'day, my name is James. I'm the engineering director here at Bastion. And uh, we're gonna have a walk through and look at how we actually build frames. So, um, Ben's had you at the front of the shop, but we're about to go into the room that we call composites. We call this room composites, but fundamentally what's going on in here is the bonding of the frame. So Alex here is dry fitting a frame before it gets prepped for bonding. Um, you see the lugs are all prepped, carbon tubes are being cut to length and sized. Each build is unique, completely un unique. We don't have any standard sizes. So every build has a, a build pack, which looks like this. The, uh, the numbers that are highlighted there go straight onto the jig. Um, everything's been cut to length straight off. Drawings that come out of the CAD design for the bike. Um, so all of that linked together. 
So from here, once dry fit's been confirmed, there'll be final clean down of the parts pre-treat on the metallic side. And we glue the bikes together with a two-part epoxy aerospace grade resin. So the basis of our carbon fibre tubes uh, is filament winding. We filament wind tubes, um, which is a computer controlled method of laying down fibres. So in this instance we've got a, a preform or a mandrel for a chainstay. So this is going to be a left and right chainstay eventually. Um, this piece goes between the chucks uh, on this setup and as this is rotated uh, delivery head is delivering dry carbon fibre through a resin bath out onto that mandrel and then the relative speeds of the, the rotating mandrel and the delivery head uh, what allows us to control the fibre orientation in a layer by layer way um, and that's an automated process essentially uh, running g-code we write in Microsoft soft Excel um, and it's about a, a 15 minute wind for a chain stay. Um, once that's wound, it comes off, uh, some molds over the top and into a back bag to be cured. So a lot of people are pretty curious, how long does it take to make a frame? Uh, how much is involved? So in rough terms for us, it's about um, 200 machine hours and 30 man hours of time. So a lot of our processes, obviously the 3D printing is automated. Um, we've just seen the, the filament wine wound carbon fiber, the layup of the tubes is somewhat automated. Some of the surface finishing is also automated, but there's a lot of hand and detail work that um, just can't be machine done. So there's still a significant amount of, um, of hand work to be done. All right, so we'll have a walk through the rest of the shop. So this area here is general machining. So mostly to do with the 3D printed titanium parts that come out, um, any supports are being removed, where there's post machining operations that need to be done uh, on the lathe, that work's being done. And if the lugs are polished, then hand polishing gets done. So this is really the heart of, of our operation where the, um, the 3D printer sits. Ethan's just about to, to kick off a build, so we'll look over his shoulder. We run a, a Renishaw AM250 um, exclusively on titanium. So what this machine is doing is melting titanium powder with a very high power, of reasonable power laser. Um, and we're melting that powder initially onto a build plate of titanium and the parts are built up uh, layer by layer uh, and just melted cross section at a time. So it's caught a good time. Ethan's just flipped the machine this morning we're about to hit go on the next cycle. We're running about 40 hour cycles. So we try and launch the machine Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And off those three launches, we've got the capacity to do around four bikes per week. So you are here at the right time. Do you want to press the play button? We can play like that and do. Right, so when we press play on the machine, it's going to launch the, uh, the build sequence. It'll give you a warning screen to say, have you shut or have you opened all the safety valves? You're going to say, yes, I have. Let's do it. Let's go for it. So this yeah. is a little bit like, do you want to vent not noxious gas? Yes. <laughs> okay. So what have I done? So what the machine will now do is evacuate the build chamber of uh, any air that's in there. So we have to suck out all the oxygen before we start melting titanium. So you can see the pressure will be going down. Um, where are we? Chamber pressure. Is negative, so uh, all the oxygen and air is being sucked out of the chamber to vacuum. Once it reaches a partial vacuum, argon will begin to be purged in, and then that process will continue until the oxygen content reaches a critical level, at which point we can start. The lasers will start automatically um, melting material. So that's going to take five minutes. As part of the, the build process or the print process, parts uh, need to be heat treated after the build. Because they're built layer-wise, there are internal stresses within the part and we need to do a stress relieving anneal. Um, that's what this furnace is for. So the whole build plate with the parts on it goes into the, the furnace and that's inside a box. Also under argon um, to uh, reduce any oxygen that's, that's there and that does a, an annealing cycle up to 750 degrees Celsius. The lasers have just kicked off. We're literally on layer one. So what you can see, what you can see there is the very first layer going down onto the build plate. So a very thin layer of titanium powder has just been wiped onto the plate and sitting there. And then the laser is fusing those first 
supports to the plate and then you keep watching for a few more seconds once it finishes this pass the wiper will go and get more powder as it does that the build plate moves down 60 micron and fresh so here we go build plates now moved down and fresh powder will get wiped across in a controlled thin layer and then the laser is going to go again Uh, we've found ourselves now at Paint Shop. So Paint Shop is another one of the businesses here at 412. Uh, operates as Velocraft. Um, it's run by Steve here, who's about to jump back in the booth. So the Velocraft boys are painting all of the bastions, all of the Provers, as well as uh, other customer bikes that come in. Um, and they're an accredited specialising Trek uh, repainter in, in Australia. Could probably come and have a, a bit of a sticky beak in here. Steve's got a lime green bastion going on in there. You want to have a look? Yeah. Here you go. Go and have a look. What's that one? Green over green candy over something. Yeah, let me get green over green candy. Alright. Steve and the other boys here at Velocraft don't have any rules and uh, seldom say it can't be done. Um, which has led us, they think it, but they don't say it, which has led us to start doing things of this level. So this is a Bastion Demon frame, which actually has 24 karat gold leaf uh, laminated in under the clear um, and within all the, all the debosses in the frame. So it's really whatever you can imagine um, can be done. Oh, I should point out also is, there's other details like um, obviously personalization in the frame, but flags have become pretty popular and, uh, and these boys have got very good at doing tiny stars. So vibratory finishing does a lot of our surface finishing work on the titanium parts for us. Uh, this thing only runs at night, it's very loud, um, but our tie parts spend quite a lot of time in here. It's a particular type of media, a particular amount of water, a particular frequency of vibration. It's, um, it's kind of the equivalent of sending a part down a river for a thousand years overnight. Show you a little bit of the design process yeah. and CAD system behind what we're doing. So, here, what do we got? Here we go. So, we'll open this bike up. The lead time is a very common question. Obviously, people want to know if we're going to go ahead with one of these things, how long does it take? At the moment, um, we're quoting six to seven month lead time, and that, imp that includes the um, engineering report, drawing, and, and um, sign off data that we send to the customer. Sometimes a little bit of back and forth on, you know, can I change this angle, or what happens if we do. You know, chain stays three mil longer, that kind of thing. So we, we generate quite a detailed report and drawing to facilitate that conversation whilst you're kind of in the build queue. And then hopefully um, the design gets approved and uh, we're all ready to go uh, with, you know, three months to go, that kind of thing. And the bikes are actually, once they hit the top of the build queue, in, you know, actually in production for that, you know, four, six week period, that kind of thing. Uh, the des so we run three seats of Siemens NX, so we're you know, ex-automotive engineers, so our strength really is parametric CAD design. Um, we have a pretty detailed parametric model of, of each of the, the bikes, um, offer a fit or a um, set of geometry. We have parameters that go in here, um, you press OK go make a coffee, come back, and a new bike will be generated, in theory. Uh, that works pretty well most of the time. And then those parts are automatically laid out in, uh, in build orientation. And then you can see that data gets exported and then ends up uh, in this package to be supported and prepared for printing. You can see there's a set of parts on a build plate with um, sacrificial supports in blue, obviously the parts are orange and that data has just been sliced and sent to the printer. I guess the thing, if you haven't seen it before, that we're really doing with the titanium and what we're exploiting uh, uh, thin walled structures with structural lattice on the inside. So that's a pretty good cross section of the bottom bracket on a road bike. You can see um, how much air is on the inside. So really a structural concept is that it's a stressed skin membrane around the outside with structural core. And then obviously, um, 
the thickness is down as thin as 0.25 millimetres in some parts, but um, a general wall thickness of around half a millimetre with thickened portions and stress relieved, you know, thicker portions where they, where they need to be. So that's what's going on the, on the inside of the parts. Um, surface finish wise, uh, you can get up to like a polish finish like that. Uh, lots of people are leaning towards painting lugs and you know brushed copper finishes and all, all sorts of things so whether it's bare metal um, or painted finish we can do lots of different things and so we're not just making bike frames we've got involved with um, other components as well so uh, there's some cranks being made um, we were, we're printing 3d printing the spindle and the arms which obviously work together uh, and we're getting pretty pretty phenomenal stiffness to weight ratio out of, out of these structures. There we go, a little bit of a walk through the factory. Thanks for coming in to have a look. Um, obviously, if you're interested in uh, what we're going, going on here at Bastion, bastioncycles.com, you can have a look at all of our models. All of our latest stuff goes up on Instagram primarily, Instagram and Facebook, so be sure to follow us there. Drop us a line at info at bastioncycles.com. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel and don't forget to click the bell button to be notified of future videos as they are released to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.